Are you a noob? A newbie? Yeah, you might be. We're gonna find out. Today I'm gonna be going over with you guys seven different fragrances that you need to know in order to not be considered a noob. Hey friends, Ash here with Jen Sense. This is easy mode. You should know each one of these fragrances and hopefully you know how they smell. But if you don't, you should definitely check them out as soon as possible. That way you are no longer considered a huge noob. So let's jump into it. Let's go over these scents. Now I'm not including women's fragrances in here, so no Chanel number no. five or anything like that. That's also a little bit too easy. I didn't go for just the absolute most prominent fragrances of all time. So no Aqua de Jo in here, no CK1 in here, though each one of these fragrances is really well known. So like I said, it's easy mode. You should know these, but uh, it's not the easiest mode or whatever. Although the one I'm starting with definitely, definitely is, but you gotta know it, so I have to include it. Aventus from Creed. Pineapple, birch, musk, bergamot, black currant, vanilla. Some of the notes in the fragrance. Now this is ultra hyper versatile. You can use this anywhere, anytime, it doesn't matter. Now, honestly, I love the way Aventus smells. I have smelled it hundreds, if not thousands of times. And uh, yeah, I still absolutely adore this stuff. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Hate the price, mad expensive, but it's a wonderful scent. It really redefined men's fragrances. It's been knocked off eight billion times. That is a scientific fact, eight billion times. Well, maybe not completely a scientific fact. It might be slightly less than 8 billion times, but not by much. You got to know it. It's Aventus. This stuff gets talked about ad nauseum online, in videos, at stores. <laughs> I mean, if you go to a store that has a Creed counter, this is going to get pitched to you when you walk by the counter. Hey, have you ever smelled Creed Aventus? And you need to try the real deal Aventus if you never have. I mean, if you've smelled Club de Nuit Intense Man or La Venture, and then you say, I don't need to smell Aventus because I smelled the clone, so I know how Aventus smells. No, you don't. You know how the clone smells. It's not the same. Now, you may decide after smelling Aventus, hey, the clone is the way to go for me. The price. Uh, versus what I get is just better. And if that's the case, awesome. But in order to not be a noob, you have to have smelled this. Next up, Dior Ohm Intense. Yeah, I love this one too. I have three bottles of this stuff. Am I ever, ever going to use it all? No, but I still have them anyway for reasons. Iris and Brett Cedar and Lavender. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think I might like this more than Aventus, actually. Just on a personal level, my God, it's good. Great for formal situations, fall and winter time. Not so good for spring or summer. Not really that great for casual situations, but the scent itself is just bang on a killer. So Dior Homme Intense is what it says it is. It is a more intense version of the Dior Homme that directly preceded it which has now been replaced with Dior Ohm 2020, which does not smell at all like Dior Ohm or Dior Ohm Intense. So with this one, Iris is the name of the game. That's the main player here. It does have kind of a makeup-y powdery feel to it, but it smells unbelievable. It's got a richness to it, a warmth, a sweetness that lies underneath that Iris that is just out of this world. You have to smell Dior Ohm Intense at some point. It may not be for you. You may not dig it, but you need to see what all the fuss is about. You need to smell Dior Homme Intense. You need to see why people get so up in arms about the fragrance changing or potentially going away, even though apparently in stores and retail situations, it doesn't sell very well, but it has such a dedicated fan base. You need to see why. Maybe it will blow you away. Maybe you'll smell it and think I could never wear that, but you still need it. 
to smell it. And guys, I have started a new membership program. You can check it out by clicking the join button below. There are three different tiers and the perks range from early access to videos to exclusive videos to monthly live streams where you can chat with me or ask me questions to giveaways. There are exclusive badges and emojis, lots of different things in there. So if you're interested, click that little join link below at some point and check it out. There's also a link in the description as well. Let's go with a, a very easy one that pretty much everyone should know. Lana de Lome from Yves Saint Laurent. This is the fragrance that makes Jeremy Fragrance take his head and smash it through a wall. Or at least that's what he says, right? Smash his head. It does smell really nice though, and if you can get your hands on one, you can get yourself a, an older limited edition art bottle of Lana de Lome. Maybe one that looks like this. They actually had a number of them. Get one of these, then you can flex on people. Oh yeah, you've got the, the newest version of Lana de Lome. <laughs> Yeah, peasant with what I have. It's in a diff different bottle. And also, because it's older, I'm gonna just tell you that the performance is uh, way better in my bottle. Cardamom, lavender, vetiver, cedar, some of the notes in this fragrance, along with a little bit of bergamot too, a little touch of citrus, a little freshness in there. Great, great date night fragrance, great compliment puller. Yeah, as I alluded to, the performance could be better because it's, uh, it's, it's not good on a scale of one to 10. I don't know, a four, maybe a 4.25. It's not great. But the, uh, the pleasantness, <laughs> the pleasantness of the fragrance makes up for that uh, terrible performance. And it's ultra super popular. You need to know about it. There are so many flankers of Lana de Lome out on the market and new ones coming out uh, every year, literally every year. Okay, next up, Mugler Cologne. Yes, this stuff. You need to know Mugler Cologne. For the longest time, this has been one of the, the go-to summertime fragrances for anyone that is in the know about it, which should be everyone. Neroli, bergamot, pettigrain, and musk, some of the notes in the fragrance. You don't have to get this honkin' size bottle. You can get a normal one like normal people do, or you can just get the biggest one possible and just run through that bad boy. Now they've changed the name. It's no longer just Mugler Cologne. Those days of simplicity are gone. Now it's uh, Mugler Cologne come together. You don't need to remember that name. I mean, honestly, just search Mugler Cologne and if it's green, that's the one you want, okay? Green is good. It is one of the quintessential soapy designer fragrances. Very clean, unbelievably easy to wear. You will not find a person that dislikes this when you have it on. Next up, Baccarat Rouge 540. Yeah, this is kind of like Aventus, really. Not in the sense that they smell similar, but in the sense that this is a niche fragrance that is so unbelievably popular that everybody and their mama wants to knock it off. Yeah, those mamas, you gotta watch them. Amber wood, saffron, fur, and amber gris. Some of the notes in the fragrance. A lot of places you'll see it described more as precious woods than amber woods. So whatever floats your boat, whatever stokes your fire, that's what you can call it. Amber wood, precious woods, who cares? A lot of people will say this smells like candy floss or cotton candy. I guess it depends on where you're from as to what you call it. But it does have a really sugared sweet scent profile to it. Very appealing, it smells good in the air. It's got a, a surprising amount of depth, more than you might think, especially because it gets written off by some people as being overly simplistic, but it does have a nice bit of complexity. It changes as it dries down. It gets a little more of a, a warmth to it as it dries on your skin. Some people would say a little bit feminine. Personally, I think it's completely unisex, big compliment puller as well. And it's the type of fragrance that you might think is gone off your skin and just, you know, floating in the ether somewhere into the void. And uh, you'll think, man, performance on this sucks, especially for the price. And then somebody will walk up to you and be like, hey, what are you wearing? It smells good. And you just think to yourself, my nose has betrayed me. How can I trust again? BR540, gotta know it. It, it gets copied so much. And even when it's not directly being knocked off, you'll smell its influence in a bunch of other fragrances once you become familiar with how that smells. And if we're just talking the most popular niche fragrances, especially in terms of their influence, Aventus, 
BRR540. That's it. Now this next one, this one is just the fragrance connoisseur special as far as bang for your buck, cheap fragrances go. It is Encre Noir from Lalique. And I'm just gonna throw this out there. Lalique, in terms of the pricing at discounters, it's one of the best houses out there, okay? It is one of the tops with a caveat. And that caveat is most of their fragrances appeal more to guys that are middle-aged and older. Younger guys, a lot of times, are not gonna really gravitate toward the scent profiles that La League puts out there. Now, their new one, white and black, that one does have potentially a little more appeal to younger guys than some of their other releases, but it still does trend more middle-aged. I gotta tell you, that one, when that one hits discounters, assuming it gets put up there for a good price, that is gonna be a steal. Steel of the century, or one of the steals of the century anyway, because that one's good. Now back to Encre Noir. This fragrance is dark, it's rooty, it's woodsy. It's got vetiver, it has cashmere wood, it has cypress. You're not gonna find a whole bunch of you know, citrus in here or apples or a ton of sweetness, nah. It's named Encre Noir. It comes in a dark, dark, dark bottle, with a little wooden cap. That's all you need to know. They're telling you right here what this is, okay? They're not gussying it up. They're not trying to, to make it more pleasing to more people. Mm. No. But it smells absolutely amazing. The first time I smelled it, I was just blown away that you could get something that smells that good with a quality that nice for $30 or less from a discounter, full presentation which is, uh, I think, a Southern way of saying, dang, it's good. Last but not least, Philip Pline, No Limits. Philip Pline, oh, uh, Philip Pline, that uh, earworm, it's in my brain again. Oh no. No, it's not Philip Pline, No Limits. I don't know what happened to me there. It's actually Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. You just gotta love the Abercrombie and Fidge Fierce bottles, don't you? You just, you look at it, it's some guy who works out quite a lot. Eh, maybe, maybe he takes a little D-ball, a uh, little testosterone, who knows? But the best part is he has pulled his pants down to where if he pulls it down one centimeter further, he's gonna have a wardrobe malfunction. We'll say that. You're gonna be arrested for indecent exposure, okay? Put it away. I get it, you work out. That's great, awesome, proud of you. Musk fir, citrus, and vetiver. Fierce is one of the biggest mall fragrances of all time, if not the biggest. Hugely versatile, massive compliment puller. You can wear this about anywhere. Yes, for the time that it was really banging and blowing up when it first came out, it was associated more with younger guys and teenagers who would go into Abercrombie and just blast themselves with about 52 sprays of it and annihilate everything living within 200 square feet around them. That's, that's basically what I thought of when Fierce came out. It was like, oh my God, Fierce. <laughs> I mean, you could smell an Abercrombie & Fitch store before you saw the Abercrombie & Fitch store because this stuff was just radiating out the front doors. And yet its popularity cannot be denied. Its influence is still being felt. There are lots of different fragrances that use Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce as an inspiration, whether just as a complete knockoff of Fierce or as a reworking or a tweaking or a slight inspiration of uh, Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce. Though, if you were alive when it first came out and for the many years afterwards and there was an Abercrombie & Fitch anywhere near you, I would say you probably know it pretty well. So there we go, seven fragrances you need to know if you don't wanna be a noob. And you don't, nobody wants to be a noob, it's no fun. You know, you're like level one, everybody else is better than you, they're crapping on you, you know, you're trying to hang out with other people that are higher level, it's just, ah man. Being a noob is the worst, ugh. I'll do another one of these before too long, and we're gonna make it a little more difficult as time goes. So this is easy mode. These are ones that pretty much everyone should know. Even if you don't know all of them, you should probably know what, like at least five, right? At least. So we're gonna ramp it up as time goes, make it more difficult. 
we'll see who's left standing at the end. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later. What was that? I don't even know. Mm.